Actually, I've got a caravel here that's dropping off some provisions, and I can have an expert farmer start doing his job right down here, please. Get some of that rolling, fix our food income problems, and then I can pick up some of these goods to take back over to early gates. So some of the coffee, take 120 units of that, and then we'll take some of the salt as well. Now let's take like 70, 60 units of salt, let's say. Let's actually double check what the salt demands are in Pearly Gates. Four, which is very nice. It's better, it's twice as much as Pearl Harbor. So let's actually take, let's take all of it actually. No, 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 let's drop, let's drop 30, that's fine. Or 60, let's do 60 here, that'll be 30 turns for Pearl Harbor. Take the rest up to Pearly Gates up here. I do need to ship that gunpowder over to Mother of Pearl at some point, though. I need to keep that in mind. Now, I still have storage issues here, so let's store the provisions on board the wagon train as well as the horses. That'll fix our little storage issues here. The wagon train doesn't have anything else to do. We're not trading with the natives at the moment. It's just standing around because we don't have any inland colonies, and I don't want it moving between colonies while there's natives we're at war with. But we do have 4,311 gold that we could spend, but I think we're going to hold that and just kind of float that from now on. Oh, that's a lot of mercenaries, holy shit. Let's get a quick look at those in a second. And we're going up to 6% taxes, otherwise we'd have to boycott gems. I'm not going to do that. 6% taxes it is. Let's take a look here. Oh my god. 1, 2, 3, 4, 5, 6, 7, 8, 9... 10, 11, 12 native mercenaries. Wait, there's more than that. There's 7 as well in this stack, so... Oh, it's 17 in this spot, this one square. 18 right here. Holy shit, that's a lot. That is incredible. We're gonna need to use our ships to jump back and forth between the colonies, just in case they want to take some shots at us. And I need to get these guys loaded up immediately. Master Confection, I'm gonna have him do some labor here. We receive some troops from our ships. Hopefully they get off the damn boat. Or are they not? Oh, they can't get out because of the barracks limit. Right, we can only have, I think, four people standing in the garrison. So in that case, I'll take out the people that can actually do some fighting. Heavy artillery is not that great on the defense, as far as I know. A little bit of settlement defense, but not a whole lot. Light artillery is better for that. If we can take out the other people. There we go. They can defend against the ridiculous horde of native mercenaries. Celebration time. We got our first trained fisherman from a native village. And it's going to be some more rolling out right after that. Soon our food troubles will be greatly relieved. We've been offered Johann Moritz. He would give us one skilled milk made, which makes milk from like cows, maybe goats, something like that. Plus 25% milk in all settlements, and a plus one cheese per stable, plus two cheese per large stable. No thanks. I'd rather get somebody else that I think is more useful, since we're competing with so many of these dudes. We got the silver mine done, so now we're producing a total of 8.96 silver per turn. I don't think that rounds up, I think it just rounds down, and you don't get the bonus per turn, but you might. You might like that 0.96, it probably just disappears. After that, what do I want to do with this hardy pioneer? Well, I'd kind of like to link up our colonies, but that's going to take a while by road. Alternatively, I would like to start working on a farm on the savannah right here. But we do want to get sugar in order to grow, to make rum and stuff like that, since our unique unit is much better at doing that. So that's something that we want to consider. There's more savanna up here as well that we can cut down. We've got to decide what we want to do with all these tiles and all this jungle. Some of the jungle we might want to keep, some of it we probably don't. I think I'll go down here to start working on a farm. The culture of borders won't expand for 25 more turns. We'll get that farm done well before then. We have arrived in Hammerstruck. We're going to offload the renowned medic, well the free colonist that has trained to be a renowned medic as well as a prospector and then bug out but pick up the veteran infantry soldier and the native merc on our way out over towards fort cod now we have three trained expert fishermen 
We need to give them a ride, or maybe they'll have to walk, unfortunately. It just depends how much ship time we have available. We're starting to lose colonists to Carib Braves. It must be down, yeah. It happened over here, it looks like. We're gonna have to redirect all these dudes. The big train of people. Oh my goodness. 5,975 gold. No thanks. That's too much, bro. Oh my goodness. He's so angry. It increases our maximum possible tax rate, but I don't really care that much at the moment. That's a lot of money. Alright, now we can lead the privateers. We're gonna lead William Bruce. But we'll also give experience points to the other privateer as well. Okay, so now... Let's give these guys navigation. And do navigation too as well. So now they can move further. These gigantic stacks of native mercenaries are just hanging out outside our borders. I wonder what they're doing. 95% chance of success right there. I don't think I want to take those odds at the moment of attacking the Carib. We'll just have to wait and see what happens. We finally got these colonial militia armed up in Mother O' Pearl. We're going to set them onto the caravel. Bring them over to the Western Front where they are desperately needed. All right, we've got 7,864 gold to spend. We need to spend it on something. I'm kind of thinking that we get ourselves another Elder Statesman. I really like to do that. So let's grab a Elder Statesman. Unless I can justify doing something else. Yeah, I think that's what I want to do with my money. I want to generate more political points so that I can get some more Founding Fathers. As well as increase rebel sentiment to increase our goods produced. 5,280 gold. Well spent. Yes, indeed. Let's spend... Let's keep the rest of the money on hand for events and see what happens. There's a privateer up near the Pearly Gates. Interesting move. Alright, medical office done in Fort Cod, and I think they brought even more native mercenaries. Which is crazy. That's genuinely insane. Let's supply the medic. And then we'll be able to do whatever we want to do. We do need more food production, though. Alright, next... Well, we can't build a proper stockade until we have a town hall. So what do we want to do next for buildings here? We could go straight for an armory. That would take 28 turns. That could start doing gun production. That sounds pretty nice. As long as we can keep this guy doing his thing, mining some coal, we can bring some ore. We can make some guns. And guns also sell for... They don't sell for much, actually, in Europe. Interesting. Cannons sell for more. We could make cannons for sale. We don't have to use it for domestic military immediately. But I do also want to build more defenses in this town, but it'll take so long just to build a town hall. It won't make that much of a difference. I'm kind of liking the idea of going with the armory. Uh, yeah, let's do it actually. Armory we come. Here we come. And we have Chief Powhatan offering to join our cause. He would give reveal all tiles of animal lair, provide five converted native, plus 50% strength for converted native. Plus 10% strength for native mercenary. I don't think this strength would apply to converted natives being soldiers, and I don't think... I'm not sure in this mod if they can be soldiers. If this 50% applied even when they were soldiers, that would be incredible. But no, I don't think it works like that. Let's see what our options are for upcoming Founding Fathers if we were to reject Chief Powhatan. Well, we could get John Paul Jones in not too long. And we need those frigates and corvettes, so I'd rather go for that. We're going to reject Chief Powhatan. We did lose a treasure to a native brave up here. I need to manually move these guys from there on. At least for the duration of the war when they're anywhere nearby the enemy. I'm going to swap the miner over to carpentry to get our medical office built a lot faster in hammer struck. I think that's a good idea. It pauses clay production, but that'll be okay. Alright, Mr. Enemy Privateer at Pearly Gates. Pretty good chances of taking you down. So let's sail on in. And let's break it up. Let's have the best Privateer, led by the able captain, attack first. We have a 94% chance of survival. 5% chance... 5.6% chance of defeat. And oh my god, we nearly lost. Holy shit. But... He's at 19.8. That means that we have pretty good odds of killing him right now. Fantastic odds, actually. Let's take him down. Come on, baby. Yes. Good deal. Defeated. 100% destroyed. 
Now our privateers need to lick their wounds. Got the storage house done in Parole Harbor, so let's go ahead and unload the goods. Now we have plenty of storage space for quite a while. Do that. What do we want to do in Parole Harbor? I think I'd like to start working towards that town hall. Nothing else really makes sense to me. We don't need health at the moment. We don't need happiness. We don't need law. Yeah, let's just start working towards the town hall. Why not? And then we can build some better level 2 buildings like the... It's not the carpenter shop or house. It's like a wheel house or something. Start lumber mill. Yeah, lumber mill and then a wheelwright workshop, etc. We want to make this Pearl Harbor pretty tall. Although, of course, we got to think about what else we want to do with this land. Because I haven't really thought about that. We've got to piers, we've got access to cocoa, or we could chop the land down and do something else, chop the jungles down and do something else with it. I think for now I'm going to say work on a town hall, but we're going to come right back to these. I don't care, no. We're not going to turn our backs on them. But let's take a look at what we got going on here. So I want to do furs from the tapirs. I want to do fruit from the banana trees, but then there's all this other land here. We've even got, got access to clay mining if we need it. Under here we have grassland hills. Now grassland hills, they can do grapes. We can do a lot of wine here. We do need to preserve some of these forests for lumber, but we can do quite a bit of wine. And I am training another expert grape picker down here who is going to get orders to learn expert grape picking right now. So that will work together quite well. So Pearl Harbor can be like a pearl and a wine city. It'll be quite a luxurious destination. But yeah, to get that done, we'd want to go up to the town hall eventually. Now this jungle marsh, what else can you do with marsh once you've cleared it? Marsh flatland doesn't do a whole lot for us. So I'm not too keen on cutting that jungle down. I might just harvest cocoa from it instead. So pretty much all these other forests, I'm going to go ahead and chop those down at some point in time. But yeah, we'll work towards the town hall in Pearl Harbor. I think that is the best choice. These native mercenaries refuse to leave our borders here. So what I'm going to do is I'm going to take this military, put them on the ship, bring them north, and then start hitting the Chiruma village instead. And we'll see how that goes. Alright, we got that colonist that was a spice trader. They're going to start picking some fruit producing a little bit of food, but also fruit that we can turn into fruit brandy. So oh, we could, do we set up the distillation in Pearl Harbor or do we set up the distillers stuff in Pearly Gates? Well, we do naturally produce sugar here, but Pearly Gates doesn't do much else. So we should probably just set up the distillation hub in Pearly Gates and ship the sugar out there. Or we could just set up two separate distillation hubs. Because it takes a couple turns to get across from here to here. Got a bunch of native slaves standing around in Pearl Harbor. And now that I've got, well, I've had good health and good happiness, all that jazz, I'm going to actually put them to work fishing. It's not going to be a lot of food, but it's going to be something. And I've got a slave hunter here to make them most likely to run away. So that is going to be great for our food production and gets them doing something useful. Now we could build a church here because we've got a dissolution missionary just standing around. Church would take 13 turns, which is a lot faster than a town hall. Yeah, let's go for a church next. And let's do the town hall instead. We've got plenty of crosses being produced at the moment. We're not worried about that at all. Getting a lot of immigration, that's for sure. Ooh, political refugee. I'll take you. Alright, we've got the cows dropped off in brown cows, so we could start farming cows right now if we wanted to. Or I could have this farmer, this out. Uh, Colonists continue to train as a farmer. I think I'd rather him train to be a farmer over time. He'll learn a little bit faster with another farmer in the colony as well. The charcoal burner, he needs to go up to Pearly Gates because we should have that powder maker house done in not too long, indeed. So we're going to start making our own gunpowder as well as our own guns. We just need some tool production as well. That probably needs to be why I needed to get on after the medical office here in Hammerstruck. We need to go for a blacksmith shop. Our veteran privateers got some promotion, so I gave them um, veteran one on each of them. That'll make them even more powerful. Alright, I'm back at it here for another couple hours of recording. Let's see what kind of progress we can make. And by the way, if you can hear my air conditioner in the background, 
I'm sorry, I'm, I try to muffle it as much as I can, but we live in a building that was made in like the 80s, and the air conditioner rattles quite a bit, so it gets picked up by the mic from time to time. Yeah, I don't know how I'm going to deal with the 17, 18 native mercenaries that are standing outside my borders. I'm kind of wondering if that is a unbalanced, like, unintentional bug, or if it's intentional because I have the most power. I'll let that pass for a moment. Or if it's intentional because I have the most power in the game. It could also just be like a ratio because I have quite a few combat units. Anyway, we've got the powder house in Pearly Gates done. I'd really like to start working on making gunpowder, but our expert charcoal burner has not arrived quite yet. But I would say that gunpowder is more important than, say, ropes. So I'll have the, well, let's have the train or cooker do his thing as a charcoaler. And we'll have the, oh my goodness, what are y'all doing? Sometimes the AI of the colonists gets a little bugged out and they stop doing their exact job that they were given. And that can be irritating. The powder maker makes some gunpowder, but we won't be able to make all six per turn. That's okay. But gunpowder sells for 16 in Europe, which is quite good considering it's just made from lumber into charcoal into gunpowder. So that's two, well, you have to chop it, so three steps. It's a secondary manufactured good, so I'd say it's that's about right, honestly. In, in the beginning of the game, I think like the average income is like five gold per good on the basic raw goods, and then 10 on manufactured, 15 on secondary. But gunpowder is pretty common, which makes it good. Anyway, what should we do in the Pearly Gates now? It's probably, oh, we don't even have a storage house here, huh? Yeah, we need to build a storage house in the Pearly Gates, get that done with. We've got a failed trader that is unable to escape this mountain range here in the north. And because of that, I'm going to go ahead and have him just uh, basically execute himself because we don't need to spend the time going up there to get a lowly failed traitor. Our military has now disembarked in preparation for the attack on Chiruma and oddly enough they could just swarm me with these mercenaries and they might actually win the fight. It's unlikely but you never know. But no they just stand out there. So my plan is kind of to ignore the ones by my borders and then just go around destroying villages left and right basically, especially along the coastline. And then depending on what the marks do, we can start dealing with say, maybe this village, but fighting them in the forest is going to be like an incredible pain. I'm going to need a pretty massive army, if they want to attack us at all. So I've got 5,555 gold remaining. At the end of this turn, do I want to spend it? Well, I have a galleon coming in in a turn that'll bring me 18,000 gold in treasure, and a brig that'll bring me a fair amount of money, and some food that I didn't mean to bring back here. <laughs> that brig was meant to do something else, but I got twisted and turned in between going from recording session to recording session. I kind of think that we want to just float this money, but the king might ask us for money. It's true. Is there anything in particular that we need next? I wouldn't mind more Master Carpenters, but they're at 5,280 gold each. At this point, it's probably not quite worth it. So I should think about doing some other things. Maybe actually getting a Colonial Distiller. No, I just looked at the list of colonies that produce sugar. And the only one doing it is Pearly Gates, which is plus four at the moment. We could get access to some more, though, if we wanted to. Might be better off doing it elsewhere, like Fort Cod. But Fort Cod's going to be a while before it gets big enough. I wonder how expensive an Elder Statesman is at the moment. 2,760. Quite a bit. Quite a bit. Actually, maybe a Hardy Pioneer wouldn't be a bad choice. Because I have eliminated some of the danger around my eastern colonies, at least. And a Hardy Pioneer is 4,080 gold, which is reasonable at the moment. And then I could start connecting things together as well. I like that idea. Let's grab a hardy pioneer. It's not enough for any event. As far as I know, most of them have at least 1500 gold requirement, but that's okay. Right, we've come to sell our treasure, sell the rice, gems, sugar, but not the food. Food sells for garbage in Europe. It sells for two, but you can buy it for 10. 
That's suspicious. That's just a gameplay thing, really. That wouldn't actually happen in real life, I don't think. Unless they had crazy export taxes, basically. We have 20,000 gold. What should we get? Well, we could get some military ships, or a military ship. But we're about to get the founding father, John Paul Jones, most likely. Which means that chances are we don't need to buy any military ships, basically. Because he provides two frigates, a corvette, and something else, I believe. One great admiral, which can go into our frigates. Let's actually go ahead and play off the turn. See what happens. This hardy pioneer just got done building a lodge to the northwest of the pearly gates. I'm wondering now what I should do. I want to build a fruit gathering plant for the melons at some point. But I also want to build a lodge in the grove here to get more exotic wood. I'm not too worried about building roads on the island at the moment because I don't intend to re-enter these tiles probably until later on if we do the independence war. So I think I'm going to go with the lodge down here for more exotic wood. Oh, my truck hole burner arrived. Sorry, so get off my ship. Train oil cooker, come back and do some more sail cloth for me. And then charcoal burner, do your thing. So now we are making six, well actually eight, gunpowder per turn. So plus 25% from experience general, our leader treat, 2% from rebel sentiment, 10% from city health. That gives us 8.22 gunpowder per turn. That is wonderful. Got myself an actual expert NATO trader, so I'm going to have him probably come over here to the east. Set up in Chichen Itza. That sounds good to me. And the siege of Charuma begins. 100% chance of survival. So odds are we should not retreat. We should beat them down. Retreat. Okay. Wonderful. At least these guys actually did their job, right? Let's see if any of the colonial militias have a good chance. 77.4% chance of survival. Eh, I'm not interested in those odds. There's a Carib native off by himself. I'm wondering if I could take him out using a native merc. Nah, it looks like we do not. Well, 4.8% chance is decently high odds of getting murdered about the Conquistador. 3.4, and the veteran has 4.5. don't think any of these mercenaries have double movement through forest promotions. I don't see any of those. But I do see Swamp Fox 2. That does not give double movement, however, so we should be okay to actually take this dude on. And I'll just send in a uh, reinforcement to back him up just in case. We gotta whittle these guys down when we can, after all. Good deal. Alright, I finally arrived in Pearl Harbor with my expert fishermen. I'm gonna have them get onto this carrot here and we'll probably go to the west to give more food primarily to Fort Cod. Fort Cod can accept two more expert fishermen. I'm gonna slot them in and then the Earl Pearl is probably gonna need a little bit of help as well. Right, we wrapped up everything. We have 21,178 gold to spend. What shall we spend it on? That's a wonderful question. Let's go ahead, let's load up some people into this brig here real quick. I'll take the indentured servant and the elder statesman as well as the political refugee or the hardy pioneer. I think the refugee brings me more solid benefits in the form of Liberty Bells, so I'll take him first and then send them on their way to, let's go to Mother O'Pearl. I need to swap the indentured servant with a expert poultry breeder so the indentured servant can fight instead. I am going to have access, I can grow poultry now in Mother of Pearl, so I might want a full load of, I think, geese. Or what grow on wetland. Yeah, grease, geese grow on wetland. And we can grow some right there. Or we could grow a small amount of food. I think I'd rather grow some geese. From geese we can make down, and then you can combine down with, I think, leather? Leather goods in order to make lined leather coats if I remember right yeah lined leather coats they're stitched together by a colonist with the leather clothier profession they work in the leather, leather workers house using cow hides and down and we're gonna have both of those so I'd like to get some lined leather coats getting made and at the moment those would sell for 17 in Europe coats by themselves sell for 8 at the moment Luxury coats are 14, but lined leather coats, those are 17. 
Although you do need quite a few steps, so you've got to raise the geese, turn them into down, that's two people. Then you got to raise the cows, turn those into cow hides, that's four people. And then a fifth person makes the lined leather coats. So you are making more value out of the goods that you're producing, but if you remember, like a lot of people get, they usually make like three goods or six goods per turn. And I think if you multiply by like five per step, that's a reasonable expectation. Like manufactured goods are around 10, raw goods around five. So considering you need five people to make lined and leather coats, eh. I mean, it's useful. It's it, 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 it's more money, but it's not as efficient as just expanding into other industries, basically. So that's pretty much what you should think about it as. But yeah, I'm going to bring back some domestic geese. A full load, so we're going to have the full breeding rate from the tile they're being bred on. And those will be turned into down over time. Now I am going to need, I could maybe need some more passenger boats. Yeah, I've got one boat on the way back for sure, with a second boat not long after that. And that's going to be like eight cargo slots. And I can take most of these people, so I guess we'll be fine with just what we have. So we don't need passenger ships. Maybe I should go ahead and get that colonial distiller, because we are starting to harvest some fruit. And we can get a distiller's house built. He's more efficient than a regular distiller. So let's take a colonial distiller. And then, I'd kind of like an expert peat and clay cutter to start getting some proper... Oh, wait, wait, wait. We need blacksmithery, big time. We have no blacksmithing going on at the moment. All right, we'll have a blacksmith set up in Hammerstruck in about 20 turns. So I need a master blacksmith, unless I've got one here already. No, I do not. All right. So I need a master blacksmith. Maybe even two master blacksmiths. There we go, there you are. Alright, we got you. Did I pick up a gunsmith already? That's another question. Because I'd like to get that industry rolling in not too long in Fort Cod. Pretty sure I did not pick up a gunsmith because the price is the same as a blacksmith, and I have not bought either of those. I might have to buy a passenger ship here, actually. In order to keep the... Oh, shit. <laughs> I mean, that's not a bad thing. Two master blacksmiths, not a bad thing. As you get more, too many immigrants, the crosses required to immigrate go up. If you be, if you get beyond like a like a certain limit, like I don't know if it's four or five, probably beyond five. We might want to buy a passenger ship now, but I want that gunsmith. How long is it going to be until we get an armory set up? Though we're working on it right now. Twenty three turns. That's a, that's about all right. Let's go for the gunsmith. Screw it. There we go. We got the gunsmith, and now there we go. So after five immigrants. Our immigration threshold has increased by 10% due to too many immigrants waiting in the dock. So now it would be more efficient for me to actually get a passenger ship of some form. Because it's going to be a little while before anybody gets here, basically. I can grab another Carrick. I don't think it's a bad idea. That is the cheapest four slot that we can get at the moment. So let's grab a Carrick. We'll grab the Hardy Pioneer, Master Blacksmith, Master Blacksmith, Gunsmith, send them on their way towards Hammerstruck. And now we have 238 gold. On to the next turn we go. I've been going from turn to turn sometime without announcing it as well. You can always check in the top right how I'm doing based on the date. Uh, normal speed is one year is one turn. Marathon is there are like four months per turn basically. Yeah, four months per turn. We have free thinkers wherever the eye looks. Governor, a political refugee, has arrived in the New World. We hear he is an educated and politically enlightened man. You may want to appoint him as an administrator or even a doctor. This newcomer will best serve your colony if you put him in a schoolhouse, college, or university. He will quickly learn whichever profession you need most in the colony. Trust me. They're pretty good for uh, generating Liberty Bells, though. So I tend to just use them for that. Ah, oh, yes, I have the Galleon waiting. And we have John Paul Jones. We'll definitely take these great units. Oh my goodness, we have commander of the fleet. At last he has arrived, the admiral long promised by the crown, the new commander of your fleet. The able captain must be like a lieutenant unit, basically. Can he turn your ragtag bunch into well-trained sailors able to hold their own against the weather, the pirates, and the fleets of foreign rulers? 
We sincerely hope so, because without a connection to home, without a fleet, this adventure in the new world will end all too quickly. Let's go check out the, uh, right, the guy in here. Let's just send it back as is over to Mother Oak Pearl. Where are our ships? That's a good question. We got crime in Pearly Gate, so gold is getting stolen. We had crime. Why are the people happy all of a sudden? Oh, the crime, right, gotcha. So we generate 5 plus 30% due to full storage. That'll get fixed eventually.